Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Emmanuel Parish Church. Lovely to see you all this morning. And we are here to worship together. It's our second Sunday of Advent. And we say hello to those who are at home who will be watching later. But it's wonderful to see you all back in church this morning. Really wonderful. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here safely this morning and for getting us through the past week. We pray, dear Father God, that your presence will be felt by us as we worship, honour and praise you this morning in our songs and in our prayers. We pray that we will be inspired by your word and feel able to share the good news for all to know about you. Help us to keep our hearts and our minds focused on you. Develop our relationship with you. Help us, Lord, to walk humbly with you, especially through the dark times, to keep you by our side throughout our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we stand to sing our first hymn, Immortal Invisible, number 234. Please stand for our first hymn, 234. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away on sin and renew, renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the mercy, the Father of all mercies, cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now through the deep waters of death, you have brought your people to new birth by raising your son to life in triumph. May Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Time for our praise and worship. This morning we start with number seven to eight. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Seven to eight. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Oh, give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. Sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna, sing, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing, Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Oh, give me joy in my heart, keep me praising. Give me joy in my heart, I pray. Give us joy in our hearts, keep us praising. Keep us praising till the break of day. 
and we will sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. We sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Oh, give us peace in our hearts, keep us resting. Give us peace in our hearts, Lord, we pray. Give us peace in our hearts, keep us resting. Keep us resting till the break of day. We sing Hosanna, we clap Hosanna. Sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, clap Hosanna. Sing Hosanna to the King. Oh, give us love in our hearts, keep us serving. Give us love in our hearts, Lord, we pray. Give us love in our hearts, keep us serving. Keep us serving till the break of day. We sing Hosanna, we clap Hosanna, we wave Hosanna to the King of Kings. We sing Hosanna, we clap Hosanna, we wave Hosanna to the King. We continue showing our gratitude to God with number 189. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord, our God. Hosanna. In the highest glory of the glory, glory to the King of Kings. We give glory of the glory, glory to the Lord of Lords. Lord, we lift up your name in this place with hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord, our God. Glory to the King of kings. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name. Glory to the King of Kings, all the worship and adoration. Glory to the King of Kings. Lord, we lift up your name in this church with hearts full of praise. You've been so good. Be exalted, O Lord, our God. All the glory to the King of Kings. God has been so good to us. His goodness we cannot deny. So we say glory to the King of Kings. We continue worship with number 87. Exalt the Lord our God. Exalt the Lord our God. We exalt the Lord our God. His foot stool, 
Our first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 to 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling, in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all mankind together will see it for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. 
Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God stands forever. You who bring good tidings to Zion, go up high on a mountain. You who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and his arm rules for him. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from 2 Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 to 15a. Do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's Patience means salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand, we're going to say a psalm together. Psalm 85 in the Bible, if you take up your Bibles. I think I start and you do the even numbers, so I'll start. You showed favor to your land, O Lord, you restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. 
You set aside all your wrath and turned from your fierce anger. Restore us again, O God our Saviour, and put away your displeasure to us. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger through all generations? Will you not remind us again that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will listen to what God the Lord will say. He promises peace to his people, his saints, but let them not return to void. Surely his salvation is near those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth, and righteousness looks down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give what is good, and our land will yield its harvest. Righteousness goes before him and prepares the way for his steps. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please remain standing for our gradual hymn, Jesus Shall Reign, hymn number 301, Jesus Shall Reign. the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to the book of Mark. The beginning of the Gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight path for him. And so John came, baptizing in the desert region, 
and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the river Jordan. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt round his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being in our presence today. And as we contemplate and lament on your word, may it be pleasing in your sight and in your heart. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. Once again, I'd like to say it's great to see you in church. We've had the lockdown, and here we are again. The second lockdown. But can I remind you, please, continue to social distance. You know, we're not out the woods yet. Wear your mask where appropriate, and stay safe and stay well. Today we mark the second Advent in the church calendar, the second Sunday in Advent. We also mark, in lighting the second candle, which we'll do later, John the Baptist. This sermon is taken from the Gospel reading in Mark, which says, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare the way, prepare your way. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. I think you could be forgiven if you said, like I've said many times, I'm fed up with this lockdown. I'm fed up with this lockdown. But you cannot be forgiven if you haven't thought about what it has meant to you in your life throughout this time. There's no one I think could go through this time in their life and not think about it, not give it a thought because I'm not sure and I pray it never happens again in our lifetime or any of our generation's lifetime. But more importantly, you will definitely not be forgiven if you've hardly paid any attention to God during this journey. Because God is always with us and he hasn't gone anywhere despite the lockdown. So if you haven't taken him along on your journey, then Think about it. But I'd like to invite you this morning to look at this journey. Take time and prepare. Be expectant, which is what I call my sermon this morning, preparing with expectation. For we have been warned, a messenger was sent ahead of us, preparing the way for better to come. And we were baptised with the Holy Spirit, our guide. This may sound a little bit complex, but unless you are prepared to think about God and his plan for you in your life, being in lockdown will feel like waiting in vain. During this season of Advent, we are all called to be expectant in preparation for the second coming, our Lord Jesus Christ. Already I see around me, people are putting up their Christmas trees and their Christmas decorations. I'm always impressed because I'm never ready when it comes to putting up my Christmas tree. And it's mainly my neighbours that remind me, oh my goodness, Christmas trees are going up. Because they always 
put their Christmas trees up. And I'm always impressed because I think, oh, I've never seen you in church. But, you know, it's great. It's great that they're still thinking about God. And they're in their homes and God is there. And hopefully the Christmas trees and the decorations are reminding them. But that's another question. What can we learn from all of this today in relation to journeying through this period of lockdown? Now, one of the things I love about God is his way of putting pointers along our way, directing us, guiding us to where he wants us to be and where he wants us, to, what he wants us to think about. Our life is a journey, and just like an atlas, we can travel around various places because we know where to go. When we look back, we can map where we've been, and then we can also plan where we want to go next. The question I wish to pose to you this morning is, have you ended up where you expected you would be? Is your destination your true destination, or are you still willing to travel? Only this time, is it where God wants you to be? So it's not just where we want to be, do we know if God even wants us to be there? The Bible takes us on endless journeys. But there's one problem I always find with the Bible. The order is questionable. Because I can read the same thing over and over again in different places. And I'm not quite sure which bit comes first. I know that it starts with Genesis, which is the creation of the world. And I know that it will end with Revelation. But what goes on in between... I can't work it out. But this is the bit that I want us to think about. Because I think this is the bit that God wants us to work out with him. The Bible's written in that way, but it doesn't necessarily say our lives is written in that way. We've got to work out the in-between. We know the beginning and we know the end. What happens in between is down to us as individuals. And there is so much happening. How can you know where you fit in? Today, however, our pointer on the map is John the Baptist, a messenger who came before Jesus and warned us of what was to come. Someone who was more powerful than him. During this lockdown, we were instructed not to go on too many journeys as it could be dangerous. We could potentially be spreading coronavirus, and the loss of many have proven this. The impact of coronavirus has caused us to think very carefully about our lives and the lives of others. Today I'd like to break down the lockdown journey, and you may well have broken it down for yourselves, but I think it's important for us to think about in the calendar in terms of Christianity and maybe how God wants us to see it. And I see it in two parts. During the first lockdown, which happened in May, sorry, in March, we were already in Lent. Then we journeyed to Easter, and then we journeyed to Pentecost, and then Trinity. But we started in the wilderness, because that's what Lent is. We were already in the wilderness. We were already in a time of reflection, a time of loss, a time of mourning, because we were reflecting on what was to come with Jesus. At the end of the journey, Trinity, Pentecost, we were blessed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And Pentecost is Jesus coming back and giving us this blessing that he never left us. He's only come back in a different form, the Holy Spirit. So we lost Jesus, but then he, ret he returned in the form of the Holy Spirit. And the Trinity was a way of helping us to understand the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit God in one. So we know that Jesus came back in the form of the Holy Spirit 
But he came back with God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, everything wrapped up in one. So when we take Jesus in, we take God in. We were blessed. We may not have had Jesus in the flesh, but we did in spirit. And he encompassed the love of his Father, our God, which told us God loved his Son, but God loved us too. After the second lockdown, which is only recently, life took on a different form. It was confusing. Coronavirus was still around, but because the lockdown was lifted, there was a general feeling of people doing what they wanted. Things looked kind of normal. Going where they wanted and behaving as if life was back to normal. Of course, this is what we all long for. We all want to feel the sense of normality. But the truth is, the virus hasn't gone anywhere. It hasn't given us any reprieve. And then soon enough, we were back in lockdown again. Back in that lockdown where we've just come out of. Because the death toll had spiked. We were back in the lockdown journey, a second one. So, this experience and knowledge of what we had in the first lockdown, some of us would have thought, oh, well, we've been through it already, just have to sit tight, wait through it, been down that road, know what to expect. Fine. Maybe some of us would have had things have gone on in the first lockdown. So therefore, we're even more anxious. We may have lost loved ones. We may have seen what's going on around the world. And things become much more illuminated. We can't be in that dark anymore. Even though we're locked in, we can't be in the dark anymore. Things are happening. We need to see what is going on around us. Many were sad from losses, and therefore even more worried about the future. Our children, in all of this, was back to school. Learning in the confusion. How do you learn when all this confusion is going on around you? Everyone will have a story to tell. Everyone. The message from the first lockdown is, despite it all, the gift of the Holy Spirit, a guide, was given to you. Jesus had done his work on earth. So we still, if we were thinking about what was going on with Jesus, we would know that we entered the second lockdown. We're not alone. Jesus was still there. The Holy Spirit was still there with everything that was going on. Are we focused? Are we staying with it? The journey? Because I think sometimes this coronavirus and the, the pandemic and all of the stuff that goes with it, we can lose sight that we're actually on a journey, a journey with God. The Holy Spirit is still with us. Jesus has suffered and died, but he never left us high and dry. He came out of the wilderness and returned in the light, the Holy Spirit. What did you do with your gift of the Holy Spirit during this time? When we entered the second lockdown, although it may have felt like we were still in the dark, the message was to hold on to the Holy Spirit, to let Jesus into your life, into your heart, keep him with you on your journey. You may be in the dark, locked down and locked in, but the light of Jesus inside will bring hope, was there to bring hope in knowing you are not alone and you are guided by him wherever you go wherever you may be. Psalm 119, 105 says, your word, God's word, is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So the light is always there, shining and showing us the way forward. So when we came out of the second lockdown, back here again, here we are in the season of Advent. 
And it's really interesting because when we look at the journey back there, can you imagine we went through all of that? And here we are once again in the season of Advent, being encouraged to prepare and wait expectantly like a pregnant mother waiting to give birth. And of course that brings to mind Mary and Joseph waiting for their baby Jesus to be born. Mary and Joseph never planned for this baby. God did. He guided them on their destination when they were lost, and we will soon learn as we go along in Advent season, the Holy Spirit was there to guide them in the same way the Holy Spirit is there to guide us. The Holy Spirit led them to their destination. And this is what we need to take comfort from, that the Holy Spirit is leading us to our destination during our period of feeling lost. Because no one knows where it's all going. We can only hope and pray that all will be well. But with Holy Spirit, we know our destination. God promises it will be well. So here we are, John the Baptist, reminding us again with his message, see I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Can't say it enough. We are already ahead. We are already ahead. Our way has already been prepared because we have Jesus, the Holy Spirit. Our journey through this pandemic had become our wilderness. Many cries of despair, fear, loneliness, suffering, confusion, anger, selfishness, injustice, murder, and darkness beyond our wildest imagination. We can sit here now, imagine that. Imagine when we sat at the beginning of the lockdown, not knowing what was ahead of us. And here we are sitting, knowing what is behind us, knowing what we've been through, knowing everything that has happened. All those days and months, cries. A journey no one ever thought could ever exist in our lifetime. A journey no one would ever have taken if they saw it on the map. If you took your map out and you saw, right, pandemic over there and this is what you have to do to, no one's going in that direction. It's not on the map. We didn't see it coming. This is one destination we journeyed in the dark and in desperation, in need of protection. We had the Holy Spirit to trust in and to keep going, the faith to know that we weren't alone. And our first reading in Isaiah 43 to 5 says, a voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. It says it all. The wilderness, the cries from the wilderness, that God was there, knowing that what we're going through, knowing that we're going through these peaks and troughs, rough places, but that he will reveal himself through all of that. It's whether we are with him on that journey to see it. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. God wants us to prepare the way for him. 
We are part of that journey for God, preparing his way. Because I think sometimes we can rely so heavily on God as if he has to do all the work. And actually we have to be a participant in that and be prepared to do the work, to prepare the way. It goes hand in hand. Jesus had already come to help us to prepare the way by leaving us with the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. If you did not receive, then how can you prepare the way of the Lord? If you left God behind and you're going through this journey and you're thinking that you're drowning in the wilderness, did you not receive the Holy Spirit? Did you not receive and take heart in knowing that you're not alone? If Jesus is not in you, then God cannot be either. And John 14, 6 reminds us, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So we can pray to God, we can ask God for all sorts of things, but if we haven't accepted Jesus and we haven't followed Jesus and be like Jesus, then our prayers, where does it go? It is more than time now for us to face the truth. Know what life journey we are following before we reach the kingdom of heaven, eternal life. As Christians, we are called to live for this destination. Whether we are journeying during a pandemic, living in lockdown or not, God has the overall plan. Jesus is our map, our navigator, leading us to the place where we will ultimately reside. Follow Jesus. He is there to help us see the glory of the Lord because it is God who will speak the final word. There's so much words being bantering around what we should do and what we shouldn't do, who has the plan, who... But at the end of the day, God has the master plan. He will have the final word. My encouragement to you is, through these dark days, many have been weakened Many have felt isolated and many are bereaved. My encouragement is when we finally come out of this lockdown completely, we must come together. We must come together. We can only be stronger in unity through prayer, through worship, through reading scriptures and in fellowship. Be stronger in unity, supporting one another through our sorrows. Love our neighbours as ourselves by sharing, by giving. Live good with one another. Expect to do these things as we wait for God to reveal his plan in and for our lives. We have already lost our dearly beloved sister Nina and many have lost loved ones during this journey so we know what we're holding on to we know the reality of what we've had to endure we felt it these times have been tragic these times have been traumatic but God stayed with us bringing us hope like he did with the disciples when they lost Jesus. He also gave them the Holy Spirit, as I'd like to remind you, at Pentecost. And he did the same for us. We cannot bring back our loved ones, but the hope of seeing them again is the hope they too had Jesus. We are one in Christ, and God calls us all to join in with him. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist said, 
one who is more powerful than I. But I don't think we realize how powerful this all is. But if you take in the Holy Spirit, I can assure you, you will feel the power of the Holy Spirit and you will know that this journey is not in vain, that Jesus will reveal through the power of the Holy Spirit what is ahead of you. This is a journey we must never forget. It is telling us a story we are part of, a story we must live in, live for, live through, and strive to reach a destination fit for the purpose of the Lord, to make his way. So we're not just living, we're living as part of a journey to prepare the way for the Lord. That is the message. We may suffer along the way. There's no guarantee that we won't suffer. We know that already. We have living proof of that. Living is purpose for God, like we should be doing. So living is just not for the sake of living. It is for the purpose of God. God took care of the disciples and he promises to take care of us. And we are reminded in our second reading, 2 Peter 3, 8 to 9, it says, But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you. He is patient, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. Everything will happen in God's time, not ours. And it's true. Sometimes you can spend a day and it feels like a thousand years and then you would have spent all that time throughout the week. And then you think, gosh, that was quick. It was only the other day you lose sight of what a day feels like. This pandemic has really shown us what time can be like. But in the meantime, while we wait, we cannot be ignorant and think God is not coming because he's taking too long. And there is no time to wait why doesn't he hurry up and sort out this mess no in the meantime let's sort our own mess out we have mess to sort out we have sins to repent of we have the truth to find and the truth to live with we have Jesus is the truth and if we don't find Jesus and we don't live with Jesus, then we are not living in truth and we will not be free. But when we find Jesus, we live in the truth and we live for the purpose of God, then we will know what patience is and to be expectant. Because we will just sit patiently and wait, be humble and know that the Lord is good and that the Lord has everything in hand. Because with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. Because that is God's time. So, however the future might look right now, the past is the past, but what will you take into the present? What will you take with you from what you've learned? Many situations have changed, but God's promise never changed. God is staple. The same God yesterday is the same God today. The Holy Spirit is the same. He was our guide yesterday in the first lockdown, in the first part of the journey, and it's in our guide in this part of the journey. 
God doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants all to come to repentance, live in hope, be expectant for the kingdom to come. So my prayer is, your destination is to let the Holy Spirit be your guide. Do not perish in sin. Let your life be akin to Jesus, as only through him and only through him can God's will be done. Here on earth, be expectant for the life ever after. Amen. We mark the candle today with John the Baptist, and last week we marked it with the patriarchs and all the saints. So our second candle we will light today. So can I have a volunteer? If you don't mind lighting two candles. We say a prayer for John the Baptist, the messenger who gives us warning to prepare the way. Let us pray. Blessed are you, sovereign Lord, just and true. To you be praise and glory forever. Of old you spoke by the mouth of your prophets, but in our days you speak through your Son whom you have appointed the heir of all things. Grant us, your people, to walk in his light, that we may be found ready and watching when he comes again in glory and judgment. For you are our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. to the creed, which will be in the green books on page seven. And we say the creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Please sit or kneel for our prayers. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of life which you created and bestowed upon us. We thank you for your grace for bringing us together into your family. We ask you, Lord, to continue to bless your church and help its ministers and leaders to spread your word, bringing more people to knowledge and understanding of your love and mercy. We pray for members of the diocese and the PCC, that your spirit may keep their faith in you strong for the tasks ahead. We pray for this parish in Hitcham Road, that it may continue to do your will. We pray for strength and grace to pass through things temporal, without losing our hold and vision on things eternal. Lord, we do not come to worship you because we must, but because we long to. We do not come because we are worthy, but to give you glory. We do not come for our own benefit or to receive a blessing, but because you are worthy of all our thanks and praise. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, for you to bless the Queen as she reigns over us and to look over all that she does. Give the Queen grace to remain as our symbol of loyalty and unity. We pray for peace and happiness to be with the royal family and for the Holy Spirit to enrich them. We pray for the government of this country and the governments of the rest of the world. Give them the power to make the right choices when it comes to the needs of their people and give them the wisdom to govern wisely and justly. Allow them not to be swayed by selfish reasons and bring peace and prosperity to the country. Especially at this time, Lord, guide them in the choices that are a necessity for them to make, allowing them to foresee the consequences that would not just affect the minority, but all concerned. Help them to be true leaders of their nations and a voice to those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you are the only source of health and healing. In you there is calm and only true peace in the universe. Grant to each one of us, your children, an awareness of your presence and give us perfect confidence in you. In all pain and weariness and anxiety, teach us to yield ourselves to your never-failing care, knowing that your love and power surround us, trusting in your wisdom and providence to give us health and strength and peace when your time is best. We pray for any here in Emmanuel who are suffering, or know someone who is suffering, that your kindness and love may offer them comfort. Lord, we ask you to continue your watch over the youth and elderly here at Emmanuel and all over the world. Continue to bless them in the lives they live and the actions they do. Set them on the path that you have marked out for them, as you can never be too young or too old to follow your word and live in your light. Help those that need guidance or just a friend. Help them to grow in your love and goodness that their lives will become enriched and they will become beacons for your light to shine upon others. We pray, Father, for better role models for the children of the world to follow that will lead them along paths of righteousness and of your will. We ask you, Lord, to continue to guide them and to allow them to realise the potential that you have placed within them. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light upon our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all people. We are thankful, Lord, for everything that you allow to cross our path. Thankful for the decisions that you allow us to make and the lessons that come from these decisions. Lord, words do not express our thankfulness, for your mighty power is at work in us, transforming us, renewing our minds. Thank you, Lord, for this day and for life and for our many blessings. We believe in your goodness with all our hearts. We are asking you to go before us today, be in our guides should situations make us wonder which way to turn. As each hour passes on this day, Lord, bless us with your strength, your joy, and please keep us under your watchful eye the entire day, ever ready to help us and to offer us comfort. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. For the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand for our hopatory hymn number 483, Restore, O Lord.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this money received and those received through the gift aid. Lord, bless the hands that have provided this money. Lord, you know them, you know who they are. Bless their hearts, Lord. Bless their loved ones and their communities. And Lord, we just thank you that you continue to provide and we pray this money we will use to the best of our ability in this church for those in need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So hello once again, good, I think it's good morning, not quite sure. <laughs> like they say, it's God's time, I have no time, what, no, don't have no time what it is. <laughs> so it's really lovely to see you all again. Don't have much mo notice, um, we're back in church, I'm still social distancing, so please do, as we say, stay in your seats and, um, you know, just, just be wary of, of distancing and, and taking care of one another and and being safe and that's the most important thing but it's, it's wonderful to see you all in church now we're in advent we're approaching the christmas so we look forward to celebrations we look forward to doing what we can to show god that we are paving the way for him that regardless of what's going on we still have to give him all the glory in everything we do because our purpose for living is for him so whatever goes on around us we have to be reminded that God is taking care of us. So do not leave him out of anything that you're doing. Okay. Please stand for the blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Our recessional hymn is in our blue books, number 334, Your Kingdom Come, Oh God, three, three, four. <laughs> 